In this video covers the basic configuration settings required to establish a warp link for the following Tsunami and Orinoco products. Uh, the Orinoco QB9100, the Tsunami QB10100 series that includes the L and the S series. We have the Tsunami MP10250, uh, the BSX, the Tsunami XP10100 series, the Tsunami QB MP800 series, and the Tsunami QB MP8200 series. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a quick uh, look at the basic settings that are required to establish a link uh, for the uh, Tsunami uh, quick bridge 10100 series and for the Orinoco uh, 9100 series. So when you log into both radios by default, uh, they are configured to link up. Okay, um, over here I did change the IP address, but by default they are 169.254, 128, one is 131, the other one is dot 132. Okay, so when you uh, when you log into both it's going to automatically put you into the wizard okay and this is basically uh, all the information that you need so right now I am in dot 131 which is going to be our endpoint A and then this is dot 32 it is going to be endpoint B okay so um, the settings are actually quite simple uh, what you know uh, for them to hook up again by default they will hook up but if you're going to make any changes um, tell you what needs to match by default okay so the device name the device name is just that it's you want to call it uh, building a and then building b okay that's all it is it's just the device name of the radio okay uh, network uh, mode that's just bridge or routing mm -hmm. uh, you could have one bridge and one routing but that's not going to stop you from actual connecting and then you have your IP address okay uh, remember the IP address is just for management but uh, you know typically uh, myself I uh, I recommend uh, making this part of your network okay so when you click next this is where you're gonna have your uh, your link details this is the more important part right here okay so the network name okay, so let me go over here so the network name has to match okay very important if you make a change on a you have to go and make a change on B it is case sensitive it has to match okay very important uh, one radio is going to be endpoint A the other radio is going to be an endpoint B okay a quick note that when you reset both radios back to factory defaults both end up as uh, endpoint A and the IP address is going to be the same dot 131 uh, so you just need to go in there and make uh, uh, make the proper changes that is covered in the uh, reset and the force reload uh, videos okay so uh, make sure that you have the proper uh, radio mode okay the country uh, make sure that you have the pro uh, proper uh, proper country uh, regulatory domain set on both okay operation mode uh, this one is uh, HT and this is VHT uh, by default this is set to VHT which is very high throughput this is what the 10 100s uh, use if you're going to use it in conjunction with a um, uh, 8200 or a A20 radio it has to be set to HT mode. That's just backwards compatibility. Channel bandwidth, uh, by default they are set to 20. Okay, uh, auto channel uh, enable. On the A, I would leave that disable and select whatever channel you want. Remember, if you're going to be in the lab, it really won't matter. And over here, I would have it set. Now, as you can see, you don't have this option. Uh, because in most uh, countries you just don't have that option and it's a good option because uh, if you need to do troubleshooting it um, uh, you don't have to go to both radios back and forth and especially if you're using DFS dynamic frequency selection um, it's it's required by your uh, domain okay and last but not least you could see the encryption it is disabled okay so if you are going to enable it make sure that you type in the same key as you do here and here very important it they have to match so at the end of the day what has to match is okay your network name 
this has to match, okay? This has to match, this has to match, and this has to match. So pretty much everything has to match between here and here. Obviously, the only difference is that one radio is going to be an A, and then the other radio is going to be a B. After you're done, just go ahead and click Finish, okay? I'm going to disable because I'm not using. Uh, go ahead and click Finish. Uh, always do the remote radio first. Okay, uh, that way you don't lose access to your local uh, to, uh, to your local radio. Okay, uh, so you do that, and then the radio is going to reboot, and then you should have a link. If you do not have a link in the lab environment, you must have changed something. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the basic configuration. So basically, what it takes to set up a link by default. Um, on the Tsunami and Orinoco products. Okay, so right here we have a QB10100 series. Uh, this also applies to the QB9100 series. Uh, also applies to the QB8200 and the QB820. Now mind you, for the QB10100 series and the QB9100 series, uh, to reach this particular um, GUI, the old GUI as you will, the classic GUI, uh, you have to log in under um, under advanced or if you logged in under um, admin and you have version 650 and above, okay, and this little icon over here, uh, you could go over here to advanced, click on this and then that's going to take you to here, okay. But uh, for all of the products that I mentioned, uh, it's all going to be the same, okay, if you're on this screen, okay? Uh, but m this really d applies to the A20 and the 8200 series, okay? So what we have here is basic, okay? Majority of the settings we have in basic. So what I have here is an endpoint A and I have an endpoint B radio. So um, what happens is that when you get these radios out of the box, Okay, uh, quick bridge. They are configured to connect automatically. Okay, uh, the only thing is the IP address is one six nine two fifty four one twenty eight one thirty one, and then the other one is one thirty two. Okay, so if they do not link out of the box, there's something else that is wrong. So the basic configurations are going to be: you got to make sure that your frequency domain is set correctly. Okay. Uh, your radio mode, either A or B. Again, by default, one is A, one is B. Uh, if you reset these radios back to factory, both radios become A's. Very important. Okay. Uh, your channel bandwidth, your operation mode. Now, uh, this really applies to the uh, 10100 and uh, Orinoco 9100 series. Uh, the auto channel. Okay. Um, the auto channel, the A should have it disabled but the B should have it enabled. Uh, it, it does make troubleshooting easier that way you don't have to go back and forth and select the channel it will automatically uh, select the channel for you if it doesn't like it you can automatically switch back to a better channel and it will connect. Okay and uh, network name so what needs to um, what is very important is going to be the network name of course the channel uh, you have your radio mode select Okay, if you change the network name and it does not match over here, okay, uh, between A and the B radio, you're not going to get a link. Very important. Okay, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is the system name. The system name is just that, it's just a, a name for the system. Building A, building B it has nothing to do with. Uh, it has none to do with uh, with anything unless if you have uh, like a redundancy system and you have like two quick bridges, you could put a uh, uh, an endpoint name here. That's the only time it, it matters, but that's a that's a different video. Okay, so what else? Uh, other things going to have to ch uh, make sure they're the same. Uh, click on uh, advanced configuration, go on security. Okay, uh, click on wireless security. Okay and go ahead and click on edit. So by default, uh, uh, there is no encryption enabled, okay? There is none, so if you have encryption enabled on one and you don't have it on another, I would disable it on the one that, does, that has it enabled, click OK and commit and then the link should go up.
Okay, and then you have the network secret. It is very important that uh, that they are the same. Now, by default, so once again, these are all uh, they all match, and because this is kind of hidden. Um, chances are, unless you are familiar with the radios, you're not going to make that change. But um, the network secret, again, is very important to security. Okay, if you're going to be using like AES encryption, click OK. Yeah. Now you're going to have a field here. Make sure that this key matches from here to your B radio. Okay, vice versa. All right, let me go ahead and disable that. I don't want to lose my link. Okay, so. Once again, reset the radios back to factory defaults. Everything matches. The only difference is, is the radio. Both of them go to radio A. Uh, just go to your farm radio, send it to radio B. Click OK and commit, and it's going to re it's gonna reconnect. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, MP radios right now. Okay. Uh, the... Uh, the MP 10100s, the uh, and the XP uh, 10100s. Okay, they're uh, uh, all going to be in the same configuration. Okay, so when you power these things on, uh, they're automatically going to go to uh, the wizard. All right, so we have here a uh, a, uh, a base station. In this case is a BS9, and over here we have a uh, an XP. Okay, and XP is a subscriber. Uh, one end and then a uh, an access point um, all in one but it's still a uh, uh, subscriber so again so when you power these things on right off the bat they are going to go to uh, to um, uh, to the setup wizard all right so the basic configuration settings again uh, they are going to connect right off the bat so this is a brand new install for you uh, that's basically what you just you know power them up in a lab environment and they're going to go ahead and connect now if you are uh, already have a system that's kind of in place uh, these are the kind of the basic settings that you're going to need uh, for your connection to start up so uh, let me go ahead and start it should be fairly short all right so we have all that basic info here the device name is is that something simple uh, you know base station one building one or whatever uh, network name uh, it's going to be mode. It's either uh, bridge or routing. Okay. Uh, you have the IP address of the static or dynamic. By default, these come in 169.254.128.132. Okay. Let's go ahead and change the IP address, the mask, and then the gateway. Click next. Okay. So the network name, uh, the network name is extremely important. Okay? Especially when you already have an existing base station and you have a subscriber uh, that you're adding to it. It has to match. It's extremely important that it matches. Out of the box, if you have your base and subscribers, subscribers, they're just going to connect. Uh, radio mode, um, base station subscriber, that's only in a base station. If you have a subscriber, you only get a subscriber. Like right over here. If we click next, you'll see it's just it's blanked out. I mean, it's, it's blanked. Um, you don't have that option. Country code, depending on radio you have. This is a uh, U.S. model, so of course we have all our uh, U.S. If this is a world model, you're definitely going to have all your uh, um, uh, your world countries and your channels. A operation mode, uh, VHT is very high throughput. That's for the 10100 series. And HT is if you are doing backwards compatibility between a uh, um, a 20 or a 8200 series radio. Right. Uh, you have your channel bandwidth. Okay. By default, it comes with uh, 20. Uh, auto channel selection. By default, uh, it, it is disabled on the base station. That's a good idea where you want it. Uh, your preferred channel, then your encryption is off. When we look at the, uh, at the subscriber, you could see we have the same network name, the radio mode, and then the country, VH, uh, the VHT. Um, 20 megahertz and then the encryption again just like the network name encryption is important because by default it's disabled if you have it enabled make sure it's enabled on all of your radios and you um, have all the information matching it is case sensitive after you're done just go ahead and click next um, make sure that you do uh, this first on all of your 
remote radios if this is a brand new install uh, if, if it's a new if it's an existing install obviously you're just going to do it on your uh, on your subscribers just go ahead and click next it's going to save and uh, reboot the radio okay so um, lastly let's go ahead and take a look at the basic settings for the uh, 10100 family and uh, also the 8200 family um, so for the 10100 family uh, what we're looking at is the advanced GUI okay uh, typically you go in here uh, by uh, if we click here new GUI and then with uh, from a version 650 and above you have this little uh, thing over here click in advance that's going to take you to here now the reason why I'm covering is this is uh, there are some individuals that uh, prefer the old GUI uh, and this is what the 8200 basically looks like as well uh, also the A20 version when uh, also logged in under advanced right um, and uh, and this is definitely one of the things we already covered on the QB side and uh, be honest with you it, it, it is uh, somewhat identical the only two ver differences that for the radio mode it's either BSU or SU if you have a BSU instead of an M.A or M.B okay so since this is a base station we have both options here and for the uh, for the SU go over here you could see the radio mode is just SU Okay, so let me go ahead and switch back to the BSU. So what we have is, of course, the basics. Uh, system name is just that. Just describes what the radio is. We have a frequency domain. That has to be the same. We already covered uh, this. Um, you know, by defaults, once again, uh, uh, if this is a brand new install, you have a base station satellite, they will link up. Uh, if you already have a base station, you're adding new satellites, uh, just make sure that you have the domain, the, the channel bandwidth. Uh, this mode, uh, this particular mode is strictly for uh, if you have a 10100 series. Again, uh, VHT is for uh, very high throughput. That's only for the 10100 series. HT is uh, legacy mode, if you will. That's for uh, backwards compatibility between a 8200 and uh, a 20 series okay so you have to make sure that the, one of these two is correctly set auto channel select and the base station should be disabled and the subscribers depending on what domain you're in uh, you won't even have this feature uh, again the channel because uh, the auto channel select is on the subscribers you just don't have to worry about it obviously you need a clean channel okay and then you have the uh, the network name okay very important that the, that the network name matches uh, between base and all satellites okay um, then we go down to um, advance and then security and then wireless security go ahead and click on edit now by default there is no encryption so if you enable encryption on the base uh, make sure that you enable on all subscribers by default is not enabled so if this is your first install don't worry about it okay and then the network secret network secret is important again by default it's uh, it's uh, public but if you change it on the base station, make sure that you change it on all the radios. If, you if uh, you're already installing uh, additional subscribers and you change that on the base and the, uh, the subscribers, make sure you change it there, okay? Uh, last but last least, just go ahead and click um, OK and then commit. And that is, that is it. To learn more about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.